You're watching clips, the best moments from our live streams every Monday and Friday. Don't miss out. Watch it. Let's talk a little bit about the substance and Demi Moore. Uh, you heard our, our, my audio review uh, uh, walking out of the theater the other day. Uh, let's just read a couple lines here in regards to uh, 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 in its first two hours of this is a well-made entertaining movie by a director. The spoonful of sugar and sparkle douse body horror. But the film's deliciously unhinged, blood-soaked, and inevitably polarizing third act is what makes it unforgettable. Everyone's talking about this third act. What begins as a dread-inducing but relatively palatable sci-fi flick spirals deeper into absurdism and violence, eventually erupting quite literally into a full-blown monster movie. Let the viewer decide who the monster is. Robert Meyer Burnett did an out-of-the-theater video, Instagram style, never seen it before. What? It was great. It was it was the best. It was the best video ever. The best, video, the best ever. video ever. Um, unbelievable. The best video. Best out of the theater experience ever. It's gonna you be see big. it. He's the best. It's gonna be huge. You. This was a big anticipation for you. Yeah. Was was did it meet your anticipation? It did. I mean, I scale my expectations based on genre and things. You know what what I'm seeing and to mm. understand, like I don't judge say a movie like the rise of skywalker coming out to a movie like this mm. because you have to understand like how much money was spent how many people were involved and Cor corline 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 for jay what i find fascinating about her is i own her previous movie that came out in 2017 called revenge which is oh a you rape saw that okay yeah, i own it i own it a rape okay. revenge thriller and she clearly is a just has an incredible command of cinematic language so when i saw this obviously i could probably pick out all the oh this comes from this this comes from this this comes from this mm -hmm. but watching it i took elizabeth i was just wildly entertained from scene to scene i'm just like Hoo -hoo. and when it was over I, I i hooted and hollered in the audience and people just looked at me thought it was the seven other the or the five other people in the theater they're like, what did you just watch, dude? I'm like, I just watched something that was awesome. But to uh, me, it was it was a great coda to Cronenberg's body horror stuff. And it's it had so many int intriguing questions. And the way it mm. unfolded was so interesting. It was just interesting. And what you want is more than anything to be entertained for 90 minutes or two hours. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the substance, I thought, was monumentally entertaining really entertaining so everyone knows about demi moore uh in her character elizabeth sparkle is an aging um actress in hollywood uh i believe she had won an academy award back in the day or got a walk of fame star she she you know she got her her, her name on the she got a star on the hollywood walk of fame they show it it's a beginning and it's a beginning in the end of the movie very well so we get we get this great background that you know she's older, her fiftieth birthday, still doing her aerobics show, a la Jane Fonda, and Dennis Quaid is uh, her boss, kind of very you know uh, over the top Terry Gilliam style, you know uh, filter of you know the men who run Hollywood. <laughs> well put, yeah, loved it. And then uh, I forget this woman's name. Uh, the actress was she right? Uh, oh, to me more Margaret uh, Qualley, 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 Qualley. Andy McDowell's daughter. Yeah, well, it's Margaret Qualley. And Qualley. he plays the cloned version, the younger version of Elizabeth Sparkle. Because what happened was Elizabeth is fired because she's too old. And move on. Let's play 50. Move on. Very weird uh, lunch they had. Hollywood lunch. She was fired over a Hollywood lunch in public. Huh. Yeah. And Demi becomes so desperate to hang on that she's introduced to this thing called the substance. Call this number. There's all these rules and all this, this strange stuff. 
basically it's uh she, she squirts some substance in her and another a clone comes out of her spine it was freaking gross it so gross real, it was really good so um those are the kind of the the th- three characters going on there well, uh, would you like any, any like to add anything there uh r&b well, I mean, I, you know, I, I've met people like that. I recognize people like that. And I myself realize that when you're working in a youth oriented business like Hollywood, yeah, you're always going to get to a point where you're, you, you think you're going to be youthful forever, but you're not, mm. you know, and I thought one of the, one of the great subtexts of this movie was casting Demi Moore in this role. Right. Because I was talking about this today. I mean, if you think about it, she was in Ghost. One of the sexiest, most romantic movies ever made. Everybody wanted to be her. You had um, Born on the Fourth of July, where he plays, or probably not. Uh, what am I saying? Born on the Fourth of July. Um, St. Animals Fire. Yeah, St. Animals Fire. And you, you. So Demi Moore is a woman that we have watched yeah. grow up, and now she's in real life, sixty-one years old, playing a fifty-year-old. And she was, remember when she was on the cover of Vanity Fair as a naked, she was pregnant with her first oh, child? Oh, yeah, that was huge. So, so Demi Moore, and also she's clearly. And then when she August- cut her hair for the, like, short. Oh, yeah. She, so, so her real life story, if you've grown up with Demi Moore, as we all have, Demi Moore is, is that character, not just an aerobics instructor. So, in my mind, I was constantly thinking, like, when she's looking at herself and in the mirror and examining what she looks like, and like anybody would, as you get older, you watch this yeah. fleshy meat sack deteriorate. It's so wild to watch Demi Moore, right. who was married to a younger man and Austin Kutcher and, and married to Bruce Willis. And it, I can't imagine anyone better to cast in this role. Yeah. Mm. She was so good. And she brought this perfect baggage to it as well which yeah. is the best part i mean demi back in the day was super sexy because she, she oh, had that yeah. voice on the lips howdy oh. look and you know this is this is oh, a uh, this is a photo of her and you know and it's so funny because you're seeing margaret have those qualities as well the, the other actress you know mm-hmm. um but you're right. We we did we did uh, in a in a sense grow, you know known her for decades, and you're also right too. Is that Demi kind of lived Elizabeth Sparkle's character right in, life. Mm. in real life, and that's what makes it so fascinating. And and the camera's always really close up on her eyes and her body, like she's looking into yeah. the mirror, and you feel her pain. You totally yeah. get it. Yeah. And she, I thought mm. she was cast because of who she is and what she's done over the years and where she is now. I mean, she brings a, an authenticity, a pain, a real pain, a, a soulful pain, crying cool. out. Nice. I mean, she has an old friend from high school she runs into and he wants to take her out and she can't oh. bring herself to go. Oh, because she, she can't even, yeah, because, and that's the, that's the, what, what you're seeing in a lot of the uh, promo footage is of her like, Growing with her face, it's because she's so unhappy with the way she looks, and all she's doing is getting ready to go on a date with this old nerd guy. Yeah, high school. Mm. That 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 is probably the only pure soul in the film. <laughs> but so good. That is great. Um, but you're absolutely right. Let me share this. You know, this is the movie, right? And it, I'd imagine, I don't know if you got any information in regards to the to the French writer director, if she tapped into this when she was writing. Well, I think it has to be part of it. She she I don't think she'd ever say it out loud. But mm. we know when you watch it. <laughs> right. Wow. Right. Wow. Full frontal nudity, both characters, <laughs> but butt naked, just so you but guys not, know. But not sex. There's no sex. A lot of nudity of, of women well, walking around looking at themselves in mirrors. Right. I find titillating too, but you know. And what's interesting too is that uh that the sex scenes were were actually very tame. Yeah, they were. They were almost um I don't know what the word I'm looking for here is. Subdued. 
Cronenbergian? Cronenbergian, a little, yeah, yeah, a little surgical. Yeah, yeah. A little mm. surgical, a little clinical, you know? Definitely not, not, uh, there, 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 there was no, you know, uh, beauty or, or, or in, the, no. in it. Yeah. yeah. And I don't say like looking at beauty, I'm saying like just like, uh, no heart, you know, no warmth. Um, so, so yeah, and here's 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 a, a shot in regards to Elizabeth Sparks' condo, and that she has this huge photo of herself, <laughs> <laughs> which is great because why not? Because <laughs> why not? But that's Love all it. she has. She didn't have any friends, no family. No. They're not even mentioned in the movie. No. It's incredibly sad. Well, and also the profound loneliness of middle age. You know, here's, she's this hot chick with money and she's got billboards and she goes home and she has nothing. She's got mm. a neighbor next door who, oh, my God, I can't believe I live next to you. And then that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But she has a great uh, mid-century modern uh, coffee, uh, you know, like dining table there. So that looks yeah, good. but it's all cold and you know like just dis disconnected you know um so yeah this is her i think this is um sue yes sue is her herself. alter ego sue is her alter ego like this is like her first day after being born and she's just like stretching filling herself out not 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 literally but like feeling life out really a great intro great mm -hmm. entrance to her character man wow no, I just found this movie wildly entertaining. Were there a lot of elements from other movies that were judiciously uh, utilized? Sure. But that's okay to me. It was a different experience, and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I've seen it twice, and I just... I had a hoot. I had a hoot. You've seen it movie. twice? Yeah. Wow. wow. You've seen it twice already. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, saw, I took Elizabeth first time, and I saw it another time with myself. And um, <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, Get hey, your buddy. minds out of the. Hey, uh, hey, hey. Uh, but no, and, and it was it, the first time we saw it. There's only we were there was a total of seven, including us people in the theater. Yeah, no one went. But but when I went back, um, there's a lot today. As a matter of fact, there was a lot more people in the theater even on a Monday afternoon, which I was like, oh, people heard about it. Okay, I'm, I met up with my with my buddy Mike MC Wong. He's in the house. Uh, we saw it the other night and he actually had already seen it, but he like stayed, stayed with me to watch the first half, man. And it was a pack. It was a pretty, it was a packed house. It was I Burbank. love that. Love it. And I was like, so, you know, I had gotten out pretty late from the show. It was like a late showing. I know it's a long film. Didn't feel long. No, it's like two hours and 21 minutes and it flies by. And, you know, I, I think I, okay, we'll, before we get to the ending, in okay. my review, which was just reaction, no no spoilers, we talked about the placements and the importance of billboards in the Hollywood culture <laughs> and the main thoroughfares of La Brea, La Cienega. Oh, yeah, and Sunset. Go, going in and out of Sunset that these are placed not for anyone who might want to see the film <laughs> or anyone who might want to see the TV show. These are placed strategically for people that are in it that are maybe exec produce it so the narcissist can see themselves on a billboard right there with you 100 percent. man this was an incredible <laughs> element in the film and the fact that the french pointed this out I'm like those fucking french i know it's always the french man <laughs> facing northwards yep why is it facing northwards because Netflix is down the street or something like that, you know? Yep. But you're absolutely right. And there's that's the thing about this movie was I thought it was meticulously directed. I thought it was beautifully staged. Everything Ooh. about it. I called it the Blade Runner of body horror Ooh. because it just every shot was so essential to creating the mood and what was going to happen. OK, so everyone's everyone's talking about the ending Frankenstein type of ending. But it was it was a hoot. I loved it. What did Elizabeth think of the ending? She thought it was silly, you know, and I get it. I understand. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, because because at the end of the day, women and men are different. Women are pragmatists. You know, they men are like, I'm going to write an epic poem. And a woman will say to you, that's great, honey. I'll support you. But where's dinner coming from? You know, it's that kind of thing. And I think that the end of the movie, by going as over the top, it totally moves into another realm. Mm-hmm. I thought it, it showed how desperate women are when they're mm. facing aging. Mm. You know, I didn't take it at face value. It's like this is the absurdity of what they have to go through. Mm-hmm. It, it was metaphoric in its huge, crazy endeavor. At least that's how I saw it. And I, dude, I was laughing. I, in the theater, I was howling. Well, when, that, the... when, that, when it starts spewing blood on everyone, dude, I could barely keep it down. I was so, I was just like, you were oh, loving it. I was loving it because it's hilarious. I mean, there's it's a way part over of the me... top. Yeah. It, it reminded me of uh, the flat, fat, gluttonous man in, uh, was it the meaning of life? Oh, yeah. Give me a bucket. I got a puke. You know, a lard ass in Stand and Deliver. Oh, yeah. I mean. Who, who won the pie-eating contest. Won the pie-eating contest and just threw up over, you know, everyone. I it mean, was it was a fucking rent. brilliantly subversive ending. Yeah. That was just offensive. And that was the whole point. I loved it so much. You know, <laughs> this this person wanted to be loved so much that she you know she she became this monster of an uh, amalgamation of sue and uh spark a great monster a great monster and she put on demi's face <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and she ended she ended up being a a blob that that crawled to her star <laughs> on the hollywood i know family. that ending was so perfect <laughs> so i'm just so i listen i love it and I get, I got, I got it on so many levels. I'm wondering if you're not involved in Hollywood, though, would you dig this film? Look, I think as a two hour and 21 minute horror romp, mm-hmm. I think it works. I think it takes you to places you haven't seen before. I think it makes you think about things you might not have seen before. And it is just, it's a hoot to watch. Cause as you watch this situation develop, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're like, "Oh my god!" Wow. It's so wildly entertaining. It just really is. I love so it. you think it works? You think it works that it's yes, it's 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 kind of inside baseball, inside yes, baseball, it, but, yeah, totally. But it still works for all kinds of audiences. Yeah, but I think it's not going to work for audiences either. So correct. Correct. And I also said that, you know, that means, I mean, it's probably up there top three movies of the year for me. Right. Me too. But I know just like Challengers, I know people are going to hate this movie. Oh, I know. Yeah, they're going to hate it. <laughs> they're going to hate because I know people hated Challengers. That's our that's our substance talk, guys. I wanted to get R&B on it. Like, oh, Man, I, I, I think everybody should go see it. Go with your friends. Get into a the big find out if you're going to a theater that's almost sold out because boy seeing this movie with an audience is a hoot it's a hoot because they don't know what they're coming to see 